So as of the end of April, more than 20 U.S. states have legalized marijuana for recreational use, and more than 40 have already done that for, for medical use. But can people actually bring it on a plane? That is very complicated. I'm Erin Black, and this is Leslie Josephs. We cover aviation here at CNBC. This week on Now Boarding, we are talking about if you can bring weed onto an airplane in the U.S. and internationally. Uh, but let's start in the U.S. first. I've lived in California for 10 years. Weed has been legal there for quite some time. I've always wondered, can I bring it on a plane? And now with like being between New Jersey and California, both legalized states, can I bring it on a plane now? What's happening? It's a really good question. It's super complicated. The short short answer is no, you can't. It's not permitted. Marijuana is still illegal federally. It's Schedule 1. It's up there with heroin and cocaine. And federal law also governs air travel. So, you know, once you, you pass that security checkpoint, you know, that's the feds are pretty much in control. It is really complicated, though. So, my colleague Stefan Sykes and I tried to find some answers. We went to the TSA, we went to airlines, we talked to local police, we talked to airport authorities, and everyone seemed to point fingers at each other, like whose job it was. So what if I were to try to get through security with marijuana? It's possible they don't find it. The TSA told us that they're, they're not even looking for marijuana. They're not even looking for drugs, period. This isn't you know someone in customs that's going through a cargo shipment or someone's luggage to see if they're bringing in something into the United States. They're looking for threats to safety, immediate threats to safety. They're looking for weapons, sharp things, guns. The TSA was created after 9-11, and, and that's what they're looking for. They're not there to, to see if you brought edibles. Marijuana is not a threat to your flight. Yeah. Or maybe it According is. According to the I TSA. They might and... run out of snacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say the TSA were to find the cartridge of edibles that I have with me. What would happen? It really depends where you are, which state. The TSA, let's say they find something in your bag when they put it through. What they can do is send that case over to local law enforcement. They'll call in local police, airport police, local police. The airport is owned and operated generally by the local municipality. Those law enforcement officials are subject and follow local laws. So we asked some people in California, in L.A. particularly, like, is this something that you would arrest someone for? And they said, well, we follow local law and possession of small amounts is not a crime. It's legal. So it kind of leads to the circular thing, you know, like, can you just go through after that? And it, it's just, it's not really clear. If you're in a state where it's illegal, like Florida, you know, worse things can happen. Are the police in Florida necessarily looking and getting called in for tiny amounts of marijuana or small personal use amounts of, of marijuana? Generally, no, but you do run the risk of violating local law. And you mm -hmm. also can't transport marijuana across state lines. So there's always some sort of risk. The way that it was described to us, it's like a very case by case basis. They want to see how much you have. Does it look like you're going to sell it? Or is this just, you know, a little bit that you're taking to relax on the plane mm -hmm. or when you get home mm -hmm. or, you know, so things a couple like that. of mints probably getting through TSA. Yeah. We did a story about this years yeah. ago, and it was a joke that they called the mommy mints in California. Oh, really? That's yeah. funny. <laughs> so when I talk to people about possibly flying with edibles or something, their question is always, okay, so it gets through the security scanner, but what if they have dogs? Was the TSA training like bomb sniffing dogs to sniff out people's marijuana? No. Um, it, you have a better chance of a dog sniffing out the snacks that you're going to have after the marijuana <laughs> than the actual marijuana. I mean, these they're bomb-sniffing dogs. They're there to detect gunpowder and, and other explosives and things like that. No one's taking a beagle through, like, you know, a weed farm or, like, giving them little baggies to smell. And I don't even know how they would smell a tin of edibles or something that's sealed, that's not what they're looking for. You know, this is, we're talking about domestic flights. We're talking, you know, state, interstate flights. That's not what they're there for. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, like when you did reach out to the TSA, was their reaction kind of, you know, was it a serious, is it a serious thing that they're worried about? Or is it kind of like, 
we have much bigger things to be concerned about. I think they realize they have much bigger things to be concerned about. I mean, there's a lot of stuff at the TSA that they're trying to improve. They have done tests with how many guns they don't detect, how many guns they do detect. And they're looking for more threats to safety. It's it's the Transportation Safety Administration, not you know, the the DEA or, or, you know, some authority that's that's trying to prevent that. And it is fairly common. You know, you think of like how much travel there is between like California and Colorado, for example, like two states or California and, and Washington state. And now New York, it's just there's so much and they're not that's not what they're there for. They're they're terribly understaffed. The lines are long. And, and that's not their, their purpose for being. I and mean, then you think about check luggage, too, because that also gets scanned. And that's mm-hmm. another place where they're not looking for that. They're looking for there's going to be a bigger threat from something like a battery that could catch fire in the mm-hmm. cargo hold. Um, that's also not exactly what they're they're looking for, but they're looking for something that could be a threat, mm-hmm. safety threat. So when you uh, wrote this story, like what was kind of the the motivation behind it? Is it just because like so many states are now legalizing it? So we looked into this a few years ago, right before California had legalized statewide for for recreational and got similar responses from from the TSA. You know, that's not the thing that they're looking for. So now four or five years on, there's so many other states that have legalized marijuana and there are states that have large amounts of air travel. New York, New Jersey, out west, there are more states. Nevada has, has legalized it. So it's just that there's a lot more possibility that people can readily buy marijuana, especially marijuana products that are very popular in, in dispensaries. And everyone kind of knows what weed looks like, but everything else looks like some mints. Like it's, candy. it's it, it, can, <laughs> candy. Is it a tin of Altoids? Is mm-hmm. it bar of chocolate? Yeah. You know what you can't get in with probably? And they would be like, no, it would be like some THC infused soda because they'd be like, no liquids. Mm-hmm. And that's what like probably would get stopped. Mm-hmm. What are the odds? <laughs> All right. So, no, it's not legal to fly with, but you most likely won't get stopped. And what will it take to officially say you can fly with this on a plane? Um, That is a really good question. And I don't exactly know the answer to it. But this... The I mean, I would assume, like, if it ever became federal law... Like, yeah. you'd be able to take it on a plane. Right. And the Biden administration has been, like, pretty vocal about not wanting to prosecute people for low-level drug crimes. A lot of states have, have done this, you know, in conjunction with legalizing and, and before when they were decriminalizing, um, you know, police are not told for, like, why make an arrest. There are so many other things that are going on for it to be legal to fly. So if, if it's legal federally, I mean, you could fly with alcohol, but, like, you can't bring the liquid through because that's you know, another, mm-hmm. you can bring the role. little things through. Yes. You're, you can you're, bring a quart size bag of those little, uh, what are the they cocktail called? Cocktail size well, uh, yeah, alcohol. I don't know. Are they called yeah. nips? I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, like those little tiny ones. When yeah. we did that security piece on airports a couple of years ago, like a quart size bag of those you can bring through security. Right. But they all have to yeah. be, you know, yeah. one and a half ounces. Right. But for legalized substances, I mean, people bring all <laughs> kinds of things through, I imagine. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when the line's long, they're looking for metal and they're looking for weapons. They're not looking for marijuana Mm -hmm. generally, but it's still, I wouldn't recommend it. I think the way that we phrased it in our first story about California was like, nothing will probably happen. So, you know, you never know. And if something else that you have like sets off alarm bells, the quantity, I think, is a big red flag for for police. Mm -hmm. So it it depends on what the context of it is. And I I think they take it on like a case by case basis. Like, what else do you have? Do you have like a bunch of cash in your bag? Mm -hmm. Then you're suspicious and they will probably refer you to local law enforcement for sure. Okay, so the U.S., no. What if I want to fly internationally? Highly unrecommended. Uh, don't do it. Um, there's too much risk. Forget getting a lawyer with a language barrier, if that's the case. You know, yes, many countries around the world have decriminalized and legalized marijuana, but you're still not allowed to bring it into another country. The same goes if you're going, you know, you don't want to go from Amsterdam to the U.S. because the security check when you come in, like, that's when there are drug sniffing dogs around sometimes. Even though <clears throat> the odds might be rather low, it's it's still not recommended. Mm-hmm. And also, like, if you're going to another country, like, you don't want to be get penalized. Like, you don't want to get stopped at the airport for that. Now, I have seen these 
amnesty boxes in, in some airports. So obviously they're putting them there for a reason. Yeah, I mean, it's a place to get rid of your weed before you fly. Maybe TSA finds it, but it's legal and they're not going to do anything with local law enforcement. And you could throw it in there or maybe you just feel uncomfortable and you go, oh, no, like my edibles are in there. But you'll see at Chicago, uh, two main airports have them. They're in Denver. Multiple airports in California have and they're them. they're after security. They're after security. Which is weird. It, it is weird because it's like, it's not just like you're nervous and you're before security and you need to ditch it somewhere. Mm -hmm. But maybe yeah. people will, I don't know, try to search through it if it's yeah. The lo local police in Chicago told us that it's destroyed, okay. um, and then the police in Denver told us that if you have more than two ounces, I think that's the amount, it would be confiscated and not returned to the person. So just FYI, you're gonna lose. I don't know why you're like flying with more than two ounces of marijuana mm -hmm. in general, but. So let's say someone gets to the airport, they realize they shouldn't bring this to security, they eat a bunch of edibles and are now getting on their flight. Like what, you know, is this going to be, is this going to be treated the same as, you know, you know, someone who's really drunk getting on the plane where they won't let you on the plane? That's pretty much it. It's just, I mean, if you're keeping to yourself and your headphones are on, like, they probably won't bother you. Someone who's intoxicated from alcohol, you know, that could raise red flags for various reasons if someone's acting out, if they're yelling, if they're loud, violent, of course, you're not getting on on the plane. But the airline's conditions of carriage, it's like really long document about like all the things that they owe you and don't owe you and, and what your rights are as a passenger and then what theirs are. It, it does say like if you're visibly intoxicated, the gate agent has the right to not board you mm -hmm. and to not you boarding. So always keep that in mind. Um, also like... Taking a bunch of edibles in the airport sounds horrible. I, I don't know if it would make turbulence better or worse being high know. on a plane. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so authorities aren't really looking for it, but you still shouldn't do it. That's right. Okay. Well, that wraps up this week of Now Boarding. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Now Boarding is produced by Aaron Black and Leslie Josephs. Graphics by Jason Reginato. Camera by Liam Mays. With support from senior production manager Kathy Mavrakakis, supervising producer Janice Pettit, and executive producer Camelia Angelova.